afternoon. I'm going to call the uh, meeting to order for October 6, 2018 for the Northampton License Commission. Uh, Commissioners present, Diane Pedelli, Natasha Yarkolov, and Helen Tan. Um, I'd like to make this announcement that audio and video recording is happening now. So um, at this time, do we have any public comment? Oh, good luck. Seeing none, I'm going to move on to item three. This is uh, City Solicitor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, for those of you who might not know me, I'm Alan Seawald, I'm the City Solicitor. And I'm, uh, it's kind of fall, and it's time to visit with boards and department heads. I've already visited with department heads this week just to talk briefly, not more than 10 minutes, about conflicts of interest. I see you have a full house here. I don't want to take up everybody's time, but I I do just want to touch bases with you this fall on this, and I appreciate you giving me this opportunity. So, um, you are public employees for the purpose of the conflict of interest law. And what I'm about to discuss with you applies to all public employees. And it doesn't matter whether you are appointed, elected, uh, whether you are paid or unpaid, uh, whether you're a consultant or full-time, it doesn't matter. If you're um, acting by, on behalf of the city, um, you're a, what's called a municipal employee, and um, you are subject to the conflict of interest law. The conflict of interest law has some pretty steep penalties, and so um, one of the things that the, conf that the statute does is provide for you the ability to contact the State Ethics Commission directly or to get an opinion from me uh, directly if you think that you might have a conflict situation. The first thing I want to, if you take nothing away from this meeting, uh, except for this, I'll be, I won't be happy, but, uh, but it, it will be important. If you think there is a conflict, or maybe a conflict, contact me or the State Ethics Commission in advance. Okay? If you contact the State Ethics Commission after something has already happened, they will put you right through to the Enforcement Division, and that is really not where you want to be. So I will encourage you to think before you act and if you have any question at all, please contact me or contact the State Ethics Commission. Every municipal employee has the, the absolute right to contact city solicitor or the State Ethics Commission without asking permission, so please do so. Um, conflict of interests are divided into two main categories. One is what we call the actual conflict, and the other is what we call an appearance of conflict. Let me, tell, let me talk about the first one first. An actual conflict is when you have uh, uh, a financial interest in that. It's you and your immediate family members, which would include your mother, your father, your sisters, your brothers, and your children, will be immediate family members. So if you or any of your immediate family members has an, or potentially has a financial interest in a matter that comes before you, you need to recuse yourself. Uh, and when I say a financial interest, it could be small, it could be large, it could be positive, it could be negative. It's all a financial interest, so you have to be careful. And you're particularly in uh, your board that deals with uh, uh, you know, restaurants and bars and places that hire people, that have investors, that have, you know, so the conflicts can be anywhere, and I just want you to be clued into that. Uh, holding contracts with the city. Okay? There are some exemptions for this, but the general prohibition is against municipal employees holding contracts with the city. Okay? And so if you're contemplating entering into a contractual agreement with the city, contact me first. Okay? Just, that's a red flag. And the reason is that there's a perception out there that municipal employees have an inside track to getting use of contracts, and that's, that's um, the, the most obvious one is acceptance of gratuities. No one can give you anything of value to do your job, okay? And so uh, you can't take Red Sox tickets, you know, anything over $50 is considered of value. So I'm not talking about going into a restaurant and, and one drink is not going to put you over the limit if somebody offers you a dinner on the house. But dinner on the house is another thing. Right? 
fifty dollars is the is the magic number. Um, so you can't take anything of value in, um, from anyone with whom you do you do your business. Okay? Um, you you can't take anything. You can't take a dollar to actually do your business. So there can't be a quid pro quo at any level. But a thing of value is fifty dollars. So if it's not a quid pro quo. Um, Something that's come up, I don't know if it's, come, if it's something that will involve you folks, um, but I just do want to put out there, if you are soliciting funds for nonprofits or for anything like that, uh, be very careful about soliciting funds, even for third party nonprofits, even for the best organization in the world. Okay. Uh, do not target the people who come before you for solicitations, it's coercive. It's inherently coercive when someone who, whose vote uh, a license holder will need comes to them and says, give to this charity. I would really appreciate it. It's, it's inherently coercive and you can't do it. You can go on the radio generally. You can put an ad in the paper. You can do a mailing to everyone in the city. That's fine. But when you target constituencies that come before this board, um, that's a problem. Okay. So those are the the general areas of conflict for <coughs> actual conflicts. Appearance of conflict is something in which you don't actually have a financial interest, but anyone looking at the situation would conclude reasonably that this person was going to get either better or worse treatment from you because of who he or she is. Let me give you an example. Your cousin Jimmy comes before you. He's not your immediately immediate family member, but people might reasonably conclude that Jimmy's going to get a better deal from you than anyone off the street. Your next door neighbor who's been your lifelong friend, same thing. Your arch enemy who, is, who might get a less favorable treatment from you than, than, than someone off the street is also in this category. So anytime you look at the situation and say to yourself, well, somebody looking at this could possibly conclude that I'll act differently towards this person because of who he is what his or her relationship is to me or my, or my family, uh, that's a problem. Okay. That problem is easily remedied. If your, um, your cousin Jimmy comes before you, all you need to do is publicly disclose that this is your cousin Jimmy and that you feel you can treat Jimmy just like anybody else off the street, you're good to go. Okay. Sunshine disclosure is the, is the disinfectant here. So, that is the type of thing that uh, you need to also watch out for. Uh, and we can deal with a lot of these issues. There are exemptions, and I'm not here to go into the depth of exemptions and, um, and you know, how you might get around some of these prohibitions. What I'm here to, today to tell you is that they're out there, and they can bite you, and so just be aware of these potential conflicts. You're on a board that, that does have the potential for conflict. Yeah. <clears throat> I have a question about conflict. Um, is this something you wanted to talk to me confidentially about? Or is that possible? Right now? Yeah. Um, you, you mean publicly? Well, whatever we have to do. Yeah, um, it's for this hearing today. It's for this hearing today. I wanted to ask, I'm just going to say it publicly. Okay. I have my company Christmas party at Packard's and have for the last, I don't know, five, ten years. And Packers is the subject of the, the hearing. The hearing today. So and is that a conflict? Per perfect example. Someone knowing that you are you, you have this relationship with Packers, you don't have a financial interest in what's going to happen at this no. hearing, and the question you have to ask yourself is, can you be fully objective and treat Packers like you would treat any other licensee that came before you on a, on yeah. a potential violation <clears throat> like this? Okay. If your answer to that is yes, then you're good to go. If your answer to that is no, then you really should recuse yourself. Yeah, now it's, uh, I have a lot of friends in this industry, and the way I look at it is uh, the law is written, and you have to follow the law. So. As long as you subjectively believe that you can be fair and impartial uh, with regard to this licensee, even though you have that relationship, then you're good to go. Yeah. I, I feel I'm fine. If the rest of the board would like me to uh, recuse myself, then I'll It's not up to the rest of the board, it's up to you. Yeah, I, I'm fine with it. So, I can handle it. So thank you for the clarification. No problem. Questions? <coughs> thank you. My work is done. <laughs> thank you.
Number four, item number four, application for a common BIC license, Levantan LLC, Bible South Street, Northampton. Proposed manager, you're going to have to say that. Sorry. <laughs> Okay. If you could state your name for the record anyway, that would be fantastic. Can you say your name please for the record? She done. She done. And your last? Two come in. Thank you. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Your uh, all the all the licenses, everything is in are the applications. Yeah. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Can you understand me all right? Yes. Okay. So, can you tell us a little bit about your place? I've never been there. Yeah. Uh, it's a home decor gift shop. Okay. Uh, I would like to um, sell coffee, tea, and uh, pack uh, treats, food, okay. little things. Uh, and I got every um, permits and certificates. Perfect. Would you like to make a motion? Uh, no. Do you have a question? Uh, no. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, actually, <laughs> So, and that's something, I guess I am curious. So you're going to have refrigerated items there? And, I and have. Other I, items to I have to everything. Sell. I bought right. it. Um, the health department helped me a lot to okay. what to buy, what to do. Uh, it's a little bit like the paper cutting and packed uh, Okay, so like you've gone through with any old permit. Permit might need to start through in that establishment. Okay. And that's when I have other questions. Great. I'll make a motion. Make a motion to approve the application for the common bachelor license for the Bonton LLC at 5 Old South Street in Northampton. Second, all in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Can we go? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. application for a short-term short liquor license. <coughs> Available Potential Enterprises Limited, DBA, APE Limited. Date and time, November 9th, 2018, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Northampton Arts Trust, 33 Holly Street. Art Salon Special Fundraising Event type is Wine and Malt. And you have Insurance. Hi, can you state your name, please? Sure, I'm Betsy Stone. I'm one of the organizers of the Art Salon. Okay. And uh, any questions about the event? Um, you've had this before, correct? Actually, this particular event is new. It's going to be a fundraiser called the Red oh. Dot Dash, okay. in which we're selling small artworks at a low um, price to raise money to support artists. Okay. And it's going to be inside the building only? It will be inside, yes. Yeah, okay. Well, we may have a food truck outside. Right, so alcohol is not going out to the food truck? No. Okay. We want to make sure that alcohol doesn't go out there? Okay. Right, okay. I don't have any further questions. Do either of you? I do not. Yeah. And so how is it set up? Is there a bar area there? There is a bar area. Yeah, if you haven't seen that building, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, there's a bar area. And we'll have a tips certified bartender. Yeah, it's like a little paper website. Okay, would someone like to make a motion? Um, I'll make a motion to yeah. approve the application for a short term liquor license uh, to available potential enterprises, DBA, limited for November 9th from 6 to 9 p.m. at the North Virgin Arts Trust building at 33 Hawk Street. So, for one I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Number six, application for short-term liquor license. Click space. Date and time is October 19, 2018, 4.30 to 7.30 p.m. It's going to be held at Click Workspace, 9 and a half Market Street Jazz Festival is the event, Wine and Malt. Can you state your name for the record, please? Okay. Um, I'm Catherine Rainey. I'm the member advocate. Okay. Have you done this before? Um, this particular event we have not done before. Um, we host a 
a lot of different events, um, including our site out at um, Click. So. Okay. All right, can you describe? Um, <coughs> I haven't been to your space, so. No problem. Um, so Click is a co-working area um, by day, and then um, we also have event space um, that we host all kind of different, all kinds of different events at um, after 5 p.m. and on weekends. Okay. Yeah. So we do. So for Arts Night Out, for example, we often host um, art gallery openings and things of that nature. Um, so this particular event will be um, um, kind of cooperatively with the Northampton Jazz Festival, which is happening all around downtown. I'm sure. You uh, other requests yeah. for it um, and so that is basically the 19th is their the first day of the festival and they're basically just hosting a um, a little reception in the evening at click yeah. okay and who do you have supplying um, sorry about that <clears throat> um, Distributor, commercial um, distributing, okay. bar and jetty companies. Okay, great. Uh, I don't think I have any other questions to either of you. Service will be where it usually is for events at Click? Yes, where the bars usually set up. Okay. Yep. Sure. I'll make a motion to approve the application for the short-term liquor license for Click Workspace, excuse me, for October 19th from 4.30 to 7.30 for the jazz festival. I'll second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Awesome. Yeah, just a quick question, I'm sorry. Where do I uh, submit papers? <coughs> um, I'll send you an email tomorrow. Oh, okay. And you want to give me the check-in? Okay. You come tomorrow or tomorrow? No worries. That works. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Uh, number seven, application for short-term liquor license at Van Building Brewery, LLC. Date time October 21st, 2018, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, Look Park, North Main, Happy Valley Half Marathon. And Malt shows all your, your tips and insurance and everything. Mike, can you state your name, please? Sure, I'm uh, Matt Tarlecki. I'm representing a Daniel Brewery. Okay. And I'm Jesse Cooley from Big Brothers Bay Sisters in County. Oh, great. So have you uh, done this before? So this is the third year of the Happy Valley Half Marathon. Um, the Big Brothers and Sisters is the nonprofit that has been sharing the event. Okay, great. And then this is the first year we're the beer sponsor for the event? You were just the beer sponsor for Bike Fest, That's correct. Right. Right. Okay. So you've, you've done the park now once? No. Yes. Okay, great. Okay. And is, will you be serving in the same location that you served for Bike Fest? No, I believe this is in a different location because um, there's a larger attendance for this. Okay. Yeah, this is right near the ballpark. Okay. Yeah. So there's um, around 900 runners mm -hmm. expected. Um, again, third year in a row, so that's about, we've been growing, so that's about what we're expecting. Mm -hmm. Um, median age is 45 years old for the participants, but um, certainly all runners will have to get a wristband showing for 21 in order to right. partake in the beer. Okay. And there is a separate area specifically designated for drinking. Alcohol. Okay. That's top. Okay. okay. And do you provide the fencing, or do you provide the fencing? Or does the uh, park provide the fencing? We have fencing. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Inc. DBO 
Easy Day Roberto's Restaurant, 223 Pleasant Street, Northampton. Um, okay. How are you? Good. Good. Can you just state your names for the record, please? Uh, Pierre St. Martin. Maureen McGinnis. Nice to see you guys. <coughs> All right, so your uh, plants, your map. Um, want to tell us a little bit about it? Well, we originally had two parking spaces. Yep. Then we decided to do a renovation of the building. One of the reasons being that we needed handicap accessible with uh, available toilets and the ramp needed to go in there. And because of the compliance with ADA, all the building thing, it got bigger and bigger. And so there it is, the beautiful ramp, which is really nice. It is nice. And now we have full access. That's good. Um, so now where do we put the outdoor seating, if there is any? We really don't feel comfortable having one parking lot. We don't, we've never felt comfortable having people drive right up to our building. Right. Maybe it's because we've had teenage drivers in our life, but <laughs> we just, we just don't feel comfortable about it. So, um, even though we created that handicapped parking, we both did. Um, we just want to be able to see right there. It's not any bigger than anything we've ever had, but it's in a different location. Right. So when we put in the handicap with the ramp, it took up uh, most of the seating area that we used to have. So uh, what we were trying to do was just move the seating from where we couldn't have it anymore over into the, where the parking where the parking spots were. Right. Yeah. And you don't, you're not required to have the handicap parking spot. Was it one of the spots handicap? Yes. Okay. And, we, and you're not required to have that. That's not necessarily <clears throat> true. We, we do want it. We want All right, but just as a requirement for, from the planning department. Or not from sense? our, not from the city. Yep. We, yeah, we actually created that, not yeah. from the city department. Okay. But we are working with the DPW um, to put a space out there, mm -hmm. even if it's a cost to us on the street, which I think would be safer all around so that people have access to it. Sure. Because the whole idea of having the ramp is that you would be have availability. Yeah. Um, but we don't want to, because people are coming in every which way, we don't, we just can't sleep at night if we have a parking spot that comes right up to the building. Mm -hmm. So that's why we kind of kind of avoid that. Okay. I've seen it. So, um, I don't, I don't uh, have any other These are all um, permits and things like that to the city. It's all part of what they've Yeah, as far as our board's concerned, we're just allowed to use it. It's very yes. valuable. So does it, no, it doesn't change the seating, um, the overall seating of the... No, the seating, we used to see, we used to sit in the front, but we don't, we never, we stopped doing that one, it wasn't popular, plus it was, you know, it's very narrow, yeah. you can't see, and there's no visual on our part, so it just created, because of the neighborhood, although now it's growing, it, it created all kinds of problems, so. Um, so your license, cut is, I mean, it's not changing the number of seats? No. No, not the number. Oh. actually have less seats now from the renovation, right? We do. Just but we more, were. More bar space. And um, actually more to-go space. Yeah. So increase that, but not uh, more bar space, but altogether we, we lost seven, 10 seats. Wow. Strategically, we did that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and our toilet's now flush, which is a sheer miracle because for 15 years they didn't. So. <laughs> exactly, right. exactly. Right. So we're really, you know, we're really happy about it. Okay. So, um, just close the hearing at this point. Do you have any questions? Well, the hearing's still open. 
Short-term liquor license. The Academy of Music, DBA Academy of Music Theater, place 274 Main Street, Northampton, Wine and Malt, and uh, request a fee waiver. Um, date and times are October 27, 2018, 7 to 10 p.m. Stand-up comedy, asking for it. Um, October 28, 2018, 7 to 10. Alone Bell concert. November 12, 2018, 7 p.m. to 10. Tallest Man on Earth, November 13, 2018, 7 p.m. to 10. Richard Thompson, Electric Trio, November 14, 2018, 6.30 p.m. to 9.30. Lake Street Dive, November 15, 2018, 6.30 to 9.30. Is a, again, a Lake Street Dive. And uh, again, request a few waivers. Hi. Hello. Can you state your name for the record, please? Yeah, Hi, McDonald, manager. Good to see you again. These are the same as always, yes, sir. I presume. And thank you for adding so many at once. It's easier for all of us. Okay. Um, I'm good. You guys have any? If nothing's changed, I have no questions. No questions. Okay. Someone like to make a motion? Sure. I'll make a motion to approve the applications for short term liquor licenses for the Academy of Music for the dates as outlined in the agenda. Just that. Perfect. Second that. Yeah. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. Aye. 
Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and, um, oh, and yes, I also uh, make the motion to approve the requested fee waiver. Second that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, number 11, application for short-term liquor license in the Center for the Arts, Northampton Community Arts Trust, 33 College Street, also request a fee waiver. The time is November 3rd, 2018, 6.30 to 10, events 24-hour theater project. And the next is November 11th, 2018, 3.30 p.m. to 6.30. And then when you at school of or whatever, flamenco trio. There you go. There it is. And you have tips and your insurance. How are you doing? Can you uh, state your name for the record, please? I'm Penny Burke, the uh, oh. still director of Northampton. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I read. The forever retiring director of Northampton. It's a process. It is. It's a, pro it's a process. One, one day, someone else will be saying that to you. So all the same as uh, oh, true. Yeah, you're well, this is this is actually this is new. We have not had a venue for five years. I finally, have opened up. We had some small spaces here, but this is the first time that we're opening up public space uh, for a venue. We have historically, uh, very much like the academy, make available beer and wine during intermissions. Uh, this is not like a specific fundraiser. So I just want to you know ex explain that the request for fee waiver is the same situation as the academy except that our audiences are in the neighborhood of like 100 to 150 so if we had to pay 61 dollars for each time we were going to do this it could be a losing proposition so uh, uh, this is really i don't want to call it's it's to be festive and it's uh, to offer uh, convenience for people to I don't. I mean, I'm just curious. Historically, have granted the fee waiver for the North Hampton Center for the Arts? This is kind of qualified. Our fee waiver dates back to like, so Mar have, Mary Medora. Yes. <clears throat> I mean, I would say, and then whoever followed. Yeah. You know, so there's a precedence that you've received the fee waiver. Yes. Yes. We, yes. Fortunately. <laughs> okay. <coughs> so we're good with a few waivers. If that's the, I think I'm fine with a few waiver. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Especially if there's a precedent. There's a precedent. So. Yeah. That's fine. We can do the first time. <coughs> do you want to make a motion on that? Sure. I will make a motion to approve the applications for short-term liquor licenses for the Northampton Center for the Arts at 33 Holly Street, Northampton Community Arts Trust for Wine and Malt for November 3rd from 6.30 to 10 p.m. as well as November 11th for, from 3.30 to 6.30 p.m. and um, <coughs> the request for the fee waiver. Second that, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Number 12. Short-term liquor license, Silver Skate Designs. The time is the 23rd and 24th and 25th, uh, 2018, 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. Places at Silver Skate Designs, 1 King Street, annual customer appreciation event, wine and malt. It's got their insurance set. Hi, can you state your name, please? Hi, I'm Jane Miro, General Miro. Um, Jane, do you have people that are TIP certified that you're going to have there? Yes, the Lettos oh, does okay. our catering every year. They just didn't give me the certain number. Oh, okay. But this is uh, the 43rd year we're doing this. Okay, and then who's your distributor for their alcohol? It's the Lettos. They have a catering? Has done it for yeah 20 years. I know, but the law basically states, or ABCC states, that it's got to be done by a licensed uh, distributor, like Commercial Distributing or Williams or something like that, or they can have a catering license. 
switch. So okay. Oh, we can we can Do you probably know if get they have a twelve C catering license in the state. I don't. Okay. Well, it's not on you. So um, you want me to? Is, I can check it out. I'm going to see them tonight and. Yeah, I, I mean, just get back to us one way or another. We'll, uh, I'll see him too if I, if we get over there. Okay. Close, but I'll see. Right. So we have plenty of time. Yeah, it's okay. just I'm going to be away for the November, yeah. um, and December meeting, so that's why I was trying to do this. But let me find out today, mm -hmm. and then do I just let you know? Yeah. Okay. And it's simple. Otherwise, just. Uh, Okay, so I just want to be clear. I need to ask them if they have a catering license. Yeah. If right. not, then I need to go hire a caterer that has. Either a caterer or you need to just get commercial um, distributing or something. Well, like they that. do the food and everything, so I guess it would be yeah. a caterer. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So can I just leave this with you, Neely? This is just to pay for it because I'm on an airplane to ice. Okay. Get this stuff. Okay. Okay. Thanks. And can you send someone else to the November meeting? Yeah. And you're on your behalf, yeah. so that we can tie it up because we have the loose end of not knowing if there's. Oh, okay. So we need to come back mm -hmm. and reapply. But I don't think that we need to reapply. We just need confirmation of the, either a 12C catering license from yeah. Spoleto or that the, al the liquor's alcohol is coming from an official distributor approved by the ABC. Okay. So if it. Um, is that when they have that license, I still need to come back for yeah. so, so we can approve it. So we're going to go ahead and make a motion um, to approve of the contingency of that. So okay. that way there, no one else has to actually go before us, okay. unless you don't, unless they, you know. Unless they don't, and then they need to get a new caterer, then you got to. Even if you get a new caterer and they have a license, we're fine with that. Okay. You know, I don't think you need to come before us again, uh, as long as that information is given to the office. And, and it goes. Would you normally have that documentation for that? Or that it has a key to 12C or that? Okay. I wonder if in the, uh, yeah, okay. But I was just saying, I wonder if in the past, Claudio has gotten, if there's been an arrangement with uh, a distributor that's approved by the ABCC to provide the alcohol and then his tip certified staff. Right, exactly. Yeah. So I will. But he caters a lot. Yep. I mean, he's been everywhere, so I'm pretty sure he's probably got some ducks in a row. But I'd be shocked if he doesn't. But anyway, let's. We'll just. We can move this on. Yep. So we make a motion. This is not going to be So. I'll make a motion to approve the application for the short-term liquor license for Silver Skate Design uh, on November 23rd, November 24th, and November 25th, 2018, from 12 to 5 p.m. Um, contingent upon having a caterer with a 12C license, or if Spoleto is found to have a 12C catering license. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Okay. Very nice. Right. Enjoy your trip. Thanks. Okay. Thirteen. I need thirteen violation hearing for uh, <clears throat> Zingara Limited DBA Packer at Seven Sonic Street, Northampton. Manager of record Robert McGovern Jr. Date of violation July thirtieth, two thousand eighteen. Violations. Alleged are um, Mass General Law, Chapter 138, um, Section 34, sale, delivery, or furnishing alcohol beverages to persons under 21. And again, the repeat of that is the second. And then Mass General Law 138, Section 63A, hindering or delaying investigation. 
inspector or agent of commission. And Mass General Law Chapter 138, Section 69, sale or delivery to intoxicated persons. Okay, so. This uh, hearing is going to be held today, which is October 3rd, 2018. Um, confirming receipt of a hearing letter sent certified mail to licensee on September 10th, 2018. That was done, correct? That's good. So the violations um, are read, and at this time, we're going to open the hearing and we're going to swear in any witnesses. So, anybody that plans on testifying, can you please stand? <coughs> um, raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the information you are about to give is true and correct to the best of your knowledge? I do. I do. Yeah. Mr. McGovern, are you testifying at all today? Um, I suppose I will, yes. Okay. Do you also uh, swear and affirm that the information you are about to give is true and correct to the best of your knowledge? I do. Thank you so much. Okay, at this time, if we could get statements from uh, Northampton PD. Okay. You state your name, please. Stephen Rattles Orker. Early on the morning of July 30th, Officer Montini and I were called to Packard's Bar for a report of a female who was underage and highly intoxicated. Prior to our arrival, the we were advised that the female was surrounded by a group of males and the caller was concerned for her well-being. When we arrived, we observed a blonde female sitting at the bar. I approached her and asked if her name was Emily. She responded that it was. I asked if she would speak with me outside of the bar. We informed her of the situation. Upon speaking with her, her eyes were bloodshot and glassy. There was an odor of alcoholic beverage coming from her breath. Uh, she, had, she stated she had driven there, but she had planned to get an Uber home. A friend of hers approached and said that she would drive Emily home. At that point, Emily and uh, the friend Jamie left and then spoke with the bar manager at the time, Stephen Gable. Uh, Mr. Gable stated that Emily had worked for them and stopped in to say hi. Uh, he stated he only served her water and that she appeared intoxicated when she arrived. Uh, he stated she was upset, appeared to be upset, and she had recently come from a rehab, <coughs> a rehab facility. Gable stated that Jamie, the friend who drove her home, and a co-worker comfort, comforted her and took care of her uh, while she was there. Prior to our departure, the reporting party who had left before our arrival uh, came back and approached us and asked about Emily. Uh, we told him she had been removed from the situation and she was sent home safe. He stated that he and a friend, Nick, had witnessed her drinking there and that the bartenders knew her to be underage. The reporting party advised that it was all on camera. Um, it should be noted that the Packards has an extensive camera system. Uh, and Mr. Gwinnett stated he was willing to be a witness in court um, and advised us of some personal troubles he had had at Packard's. Uh, he then provided us a statement. Uh, Mr. Vogel provided us with a statement as well, saying that he observed a girl who was underage and heavily intoxicated being served alcohol uh, by Packard's staff. Uh, Officer Montini spoke with a male that we had observed inside of Packard's, uh, the male stated he uh, recognized Riordan and that 
he had only see, seen her being served water. Um, and he stated that the reporting party, Mr. Gwinnett, had done a uh, number of shots with him that evening. We spoke with Mr. Gable again. Um, Mr. Gable was very familiar with Mr. Gwinnett, uh, and he believed he was trespassed from Packard's. Um, however, he allowed Mr. Gwinnett in because he hadn't seen him in a long time and he wasn't causing any trouble. Uh, and Mr. Gable advised us of Mr. Gwinnett's personal issues with uh, the bar owner, Mr. McGovern. Um, at that time, we requested the surveillance camera footage from the bar that evening. Uh, on Saturday, August 14th, early in the morning, I went back to Packard's and requested the surveillance footage that we had previously requested. Mr. Gable stated he, had, he hadn't gotten the footage. Um, I asked him to give me the footage again. He said if he would try. Uh, I said I would be back the next evening to retrieve the footage. Um, I subsequently went back Sunday, August 5th, and spoke with Gable regarding the footage. Uh, when I asked him about the footage, he stated that I would have to talk with Mr. McGovern, who was sitting behind him. Uh, I approached Mr. McGovern. Um, he identified himself and handed me his business card. He stated that I should have my, he asked who my sergeant was and stated I should have my sergeant email him regarding the footage and that he's been very good to the police department in the past. I advised him that I was requesting the footage as a police officer and as part of a criminal investigation. He stated he understood, but continuing forward, he would deal with my sergeant. Um, I told him I would let my sergeant know of his request, uh, which I did. Uh, Thursday, August 9th, Detective Laval responded to Packard's in order to retrieve the uh, video surveillance footage that I had requested. Upon reviewing the footage, uh, Mr. Jordan is seen entering the alley door at approximately 1241. Uh, she speaks with some patrons and then goes to the bar uh, approximately a minute later. Mr. Gable pours something from a tumbler and places it in a glass in front of her. He then pours something from a plastic squirt bottle into two shot glasses, places them in front of Riordan and another male party. He then appears to retrieve what is uh, what appears to be a liquor bottle from the well and pours two additional shots which Riordan and the male then consume. Um, at 1.40, a Jean, um, who is an employee of Packard's uh, and is known to the department, is seen to be served a shot of alcohol from a green bottle, which she consumes a few minutes later. Hurd is then served another drink uh, approximately five minutes after that. Um, however, the drink was poured off of camera. Um, during the duration of the video, Riordan moves around a lot. She appears unsteady on her feet. When she stands, she bumps into several permanent fixtures. There's a small, small bar behind the, the bar that she bumps into. Um, she's repeatedly removed from the rear of the bar area by, um, by both Steve and the other bartender. Um, and on August 8th, uh, Mr. McGovern had contacted Detective Lieutenant Kierwak uh, regarding the investigation and stated he wanted to provide video but uh, didn't have the technical knowledge um, to transfer the video. Uh, arrangements were made for Detective Laval to go uh, and meet Mr. McGovern and, and retrieve the video, uh, which he did. During Detective Lieutenant Tenants Kierwak's uh, conversation with McGovern, Mr. McGovern uh, advised that Mr. Gwinnett has had problems with him in the past, 
um, and that he believed he was trespassed from Packard's uh, check of our trespass notices pr proved that he was not. Um, but Mr. McGovern believed he had intended to at the time the uh, incident, the initial incident had occurred. Uh, on August 21st, Mr. McGovern contacted uh, Detective Lieutenant Kerouac again and advised that he believed Mr. Gwinnett's call to the police uh, about the underage girl was a retaliatory act against him and Packard's um, and wanted it included in the report. Uh, he subsequently met with Detective Lieutenant Kerouac and provided him with a uh, copy. Is that all you have? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Anyone else from North Carolina? No? Not unless you have any questions for us. Um, I mean, I wanted to ask, you know, what you recommend, but I don't think I can do that after, or you can do it now. I mean, I can do that uh, once we've heard uh, the rest of the questions, I'm sure. Um, <clears throat> So, no, we need to get statements for either from witnesses or the licensee. So, does anybody else have anything to add? You guys were sworn in, so. Oh, um, what are you looking for? Uh, whatever you have to add. I don't well, I, I don't know. I just think Mr. McGovern is a responsible business owner. Can you, if you're going to address the board, can you please stand at the podium? Yes, sir. I mean, I already think the screening is a little biased. Um, what questions would you guys like for me? Uh, what can I answer for you guys? I would like your name, actually. For the, um, uh, my name is Sean Patrick and Matt. Uh, anything else? Other than my name that I was wearing? So I just, I think this is a little ridiculous. Honestly, the reason that me and Mr. McGovern have issues is I moved near the uh, bar. Great bar, great venue, good service, uh, good drinks as well. Um, I accidentally befriended a couple people that lived there. Two of their employees, Nina and Jody, worked for him. Um, I actually lived with them for a little bit. Uh, they got evicted out of my apartment, then my apartment got condemned. I befriended a kid there named Jesse, who Mr. McGovern claims to be my cousin. Uh, he was a, in a, uh, between a rock and a hard spot, um, switching jobs. Uh, he moved from Northampton to... Uh, do you have anything pertinent to add? Oh, well, all I'm trying to say is that I just don't think that Mr. McGovern is a responsible and good business owner that he should just take a little more care of his work because I have no personal issues with the guy. It's just, you know, there's a, there's a thing on Mass Live in 2015, a bunch of claims from DUIs from, you know, uh, Packers. It's affecting other people's lives. I honestly don't care. You know, I have a job. I care about my family. Um, it's just a little ridiculous how that one of the best restaurants in Northampton is being run by a show, uh, essentially someone who has their manager experience with show, uh, of a child. That's all I really have to say. Okay, well, thank you for your opinion. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. McGovern, do you have anything that you'd like to add? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I do. Thank you for uh, being here and addressing this matter. I'm glad that uh, you addressed the matter that I was going to address as far as conflicts of interest go with regarding our relationship in the past. Um, because he opened the door to this, let me respond to it. Um, at one point, I had two individuals working for me that no longer work there. And uh, apparently, as he said, they stayed at this house and there was a pair of sneakers missing and uh, a camera or something, but they were house sitting. Um, he subsequently called me and wanted me to compensate him for the missing objects because those people worked for me and they were bad people. I hung up on him and then he showed up at my house in Hatfields and scared my wife. And I told him in no uncertain terms that if he came back again, I would, he would leave in the body bag and not to ever go to my house again. So <clears throat> he has a reputation around town of stirring the pot and liking to get people in trouble. Um, 
I've been doing Packers for 41 years, uh, well before he was even born. Uh, he's not a very nice person. So we get that out of the way. The other problem, Mr. Gable, Chief, uh, I got no defense. Um, and as far as impeding the, the investigation, um, with regard to the sergeant, uh, when I tried to get back to him, um, nobody told me he was on vacation for two weeks and doesn't take his cell phone with him. So I tried to get in touch with him three times. I'm not in the habit of handing a video over to somebody I don't know. No offense, officer. But <clears throat> when I finally did get him, he apologized. He said, oh, don't take my phone with me. And I said, I wouldn't need it. Not in your job. But and then I called Lieutenant Kerouac, who I've known for several years. And I said, I'm going to give you the, the video. I'm a big fan of video. Uh, I think we should have more in town. But I don't know how to get it out of the machine. So he sent somebody up, and we handed the video over immediately. Sometimes they're good. I know that in the past they've helped Springfield out, and have helped your department out on several occasions. I'm a real fan of it. Sometimes it can bite you in the ass. And at this time, it, it did. Um, I have no defense for uh, my, my bartender of 26 years. <coughs> what I did is uh, I fired him. Um, it's, that, was the, that was the problem, and I have no choice. Uh, the person, I have another person that works there for 26 years. He works there during the day. No problems at all. Why he did that to that girl? I have no idea. The fact that she was in rehab for two to three weeks, her father called me and asked me to give her a job back. She's a great waitress. She was a really great artist. She did the little Trump rendition on my window. And I asked him if it was a good place for her to work. She's been in rehab. And it turns out he thought it was us that was, was the problem and it turned out to be her boyfriend. So I gave her a job back, and a week later this happens, and she stumbles in the door. And <clears throat> as far as when I found out, that happened on Sunday night, or Monday morning, I found out the next Saturday when uh, Officer Rat Rat Rattendorf, Rat 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 um, was going to be coming and looking for me, and I said, for what? I found out the night before. So I wasn't evading you the first week. I had no idea what went on. Um, as far as uh, little Emily goes, I was going to have her here today, but her parents seemed to reward her by sending her to Spain on vacation with an allowance. Um, now, here's a, here's a girl that's in trouble, and they send her to Spain. So I have no defense for Mr. Gable. Um, the only thing I can offer up is just address the board when you're. The only thing I can offer up is uh, he was the problem. The problem is gone, and um, Megan Cole uh, has been with me for 15 years. She is taking over uh, as the bar manager. We had a, an employee meeting after that with the entire staff, uh, going over the two o'clock closings, going over serving a minus and whatnot. But uh, you know, there's no excuse for that. The problem, as I see it, is gone, and <coughs> I hope going forward we don't have any more problems like that. Uh, that's about it. And as far as Mr. Gannett goes, he is trespassed. Um, he's a concerned citizen. He's full of crap. Thank you. Uh, one question. For yes. You, do you, you weren't on for that. Uh, Beg your pardon? I didn't, I didn't remember hearing the report. You weren't there the night of, right? No. Okay. No. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you guys have any questions for any of the witnesses? Um. <clears throat> I, I have a couple. Um, officer, um, I have a couple of questions. <clears throat> so the cameras, you actually, so you said at one point they actually uh, show the serving of the person yes, sir. on film? And then uh, uh, another one was served a, a 
additionally later, and it wasn't on film? Correct, the yeah. pouring of the drink was not on film. Okay, are there witnesses, uh, I mean, are there, is there video of the gentlemen that state they witnessed that? Were they inside the bar? Is there video of them being present? Um, I haven't met Mr. Vogel, so I don't know what he looks like, but uh, Mr. Gwinnett is inside the bar. Yeah. And then when, as far as the request for the video, who was the person you asked the very first time? Is that the gentleman that served? Yes, sir, Mr. Gable. Okay, and did he say he doesn't know how or doesn't... No, he access? stated that he would get us the video uh, okay. initially. And then when I came back, he stated he would try. Uh, and the third night I came back, Mr. Blitz, when uh, he advised me to speak with Mr. McGovern. So you made three attempts? Yes, ma'am. Mr. McGovern said he would speak with your sergeant, but not with you. So it wasn't Mr. McGovern that was actually held you up, though? It was the bartender that served? Uh, initially, the first two requests were made to Mr. Gable. The third request was made to Mr. McGovern, uh, and he refused to, to work with me. I was in full department uniform when I went to the bar. And at that time, he didn't say he didn't have the knowledge to get the video? He did not. He stated uh, from this point forward that he would be working uh, only with my sergeant. I got you. All right. Can I ask on that, what, what is the typical process for obtaining footage? Have you been involved in this before? Is it typically, um, footage can be given to an officer. It's not typical to go through the sergeant, or is it? It, it is not typical, no, to go through a sergeant. I can add on that. So there's no, there's no actually official reason that no, we shouldn't have given you the footage. We have gotten video surveillance from Packards in the past. Okay. But is it something that when you request it, it's, it's retrieved at that moment? Or is, there, is it next business day? What is the typical turnaround time? Depending on the uh, exigency, um, the last incident I was involved in where we required uh, video from Packard's. It was a, a domestic involving a firearm. Um, I believe that was retrieved that evening. Do you know who did uh, who retrieved that for you? I'm not sure, sir. So. We'll get you up here in a second. Um, all right, and then you saw uh, it was uh, Detective Laval that ended up going and, and getting the, uh, is that, did I pronounce that right? Uh, yes, sir. They got the footage. Yes. Did he have to do it himself? Um, you know? I, I believe he worked with Mr. McGovern to, to get that. I'm not sure okay. if he actually did the work of transferring uh, the files. Okay. Mr. McGovern wants to say something in a minute. We'll ask him that. So, um, all right. Those are the only questions I have regarding the video and stuff. Um, are there any other questions from you two? We have this question. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I just wanted to review. So you said, so it sounds like that night there were two people who stated that um, Ms. Reardon only had water. It was the bartender. And then there was an unnamed witness? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And did he, so he's not someone that you got a name from or, um, or was he, because what I was wondering too is then later you state that um, Amy, I don't know her last name, and, and a and a man were at the bar and they were also served shots. That was, was that the same person? Was he involved in any other way or he was just someone sitting there? Uh, the, the second yeah. witness that stated she had only had water, um, I didn't speak with him. Uh, as I believe he's an independent third party. I, I don't believe he was drinking with um, either uh, Miss Riordan or uh, Miss Hurd. Oh. Um, he did say he drank with Mr. Gwinnett. He had uh, shots with Mr. Gwinnett. Okay. Oh, this witness who said that that, that Reardon didn't only have water. Correct. Okay. It, he said he <coughs> had shots with Mr. Gwinnett. Okay. I was wondering if he was also an employee of the, of the establishment, too. Uh, so I was wondering the motivation for him <laughs> saying that she only had water when it was clear that she had more than water. Um, so I guess questions it was just about obtaining the video footage so um. so um, I do have one other as far as the, the violation being repeated twice is that for two that's
that's two different people? Correct. Okay. And you have the, the other person's name and whatnot? Jamie Hurd, yes. Yeah. Jamie Hurd, yeah, okay. <coughs> And both are employees of Packard's. Uh, at the time at they the were, time. I, I believe Miss Riordan is no longer an employee. Okay. Any other questions for the officer? Not at the moment, thanks. All right, thank you. Ms. McGovern, you had something you wanted to add about that? Uh, yeah, regarding the handing over the video, sure. uh, I think it's twice before. Um, I've had a request for the video. The the one in question with the firearm, that was from the um, Springfield Police Department. And it did involve a domestic, it involved one of their own uh, that was there shooting pool with his estranged partner. And he had a Glock on it. He was drinking while he was, while he was there. And I think within hours, we surrendered that video. But something as sensitive as what happens when I'm the subject of the problem, um, handing over videos with, with all the privacy issues there are today, um, I felt as though speaking, keeping it in one department, speaking to the sergeant only, uh, was in my best interest. It was no reflection on the officer that came looking for it, but I'm not in the habit of handing over a video like that of any kind. And did you hold that information? You gave that information to the officer, or you just said, oh, no, I just said I'd rather speak with the sergeant. Um, uh, it was no reflection on him, but it was the sergeant that initiated the investigation. And <clears throat> if I knew he was on vacation for two weeks, I would have changed my mind and just handed it over. But I, I really wanted to keep it with, with one individual. I understand where you're coming from, but any officer in that department's an agent of this commission and, you know, are qualified, but I do. Okay, I realize that. Can I ask you, did you, um, so that evening the officer arrested of Mr. Gable and then the next morning came back and Mr. Gable said he'd try to get it. Did, did you speak, what, at what point did you speak with Mr. Gable? Um, Saturday night, around midnight, I was in my office and uh, he came in and said, I think we have a problem. And I'm going, and that would be what? And that's when I found out about it, a week later. Six days later. Oh, a week later. I so was furious. And Subsequently, he asked me, well, you know, what, to, what are we going to do about it? What we're going to do about it? And uh, that's when I asked him for his keys and said, that's it, you're done. It's not easy to do after. And I still don't know what his reasoning was, but um, in the worst case scenario, that young lady could have gone home and had some pills and passed away, and then it would have been a whole different part of wax. And hurt else, so. Yeah. Anyway. Speculation, for sure, but thank you. Do you have anything else? I don't think so. Do you have anything else? I don't think so. Chief, the answer are good. Thank you. Do you have something else? I think I'm good. <coughs> All right. I'm going to make a motion to close the hearing. Um, a second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Um, Chief Casper. Do you have any recommendations that you'd like to forward? Well, certainly these are the types of cases that we're, we're always concerned about when we have underage people in a bar who are being served, especially when there's personal relationships, and I think that's when it can be challenging to be a bartender and to work in this service. It's when we're most tested on whether or not we're going to abide by those laws that we know. Um, and in this case, of course, being someone who's already impaired is concerning. Uh, but respectful of the fact that everyone's been honest in this and Mr. McGovern has come up and it sounds like he, you know, took, took action in his own establishment to ensure that this doesn't happen again by dismissing the employee and, you know, hopefully we don't have any more occurrences. But my recommendation would be that it's consistent with prior uh, outcomes of similar violations. So uh, I believe it's usually a, a day or two suspended um, over a six month period. I would ask that the six months be extended to a, a little longer period of time, and that's only because we do uh, underage compliance checks on a consistent basis, and sometimes we don't do them within the time period that you set. So sometimes you may say it's suspended for six months, but we may not have a compliance check within that time, so it doesn't give us time to do that. We just can't host those frequently. Um, so if you could extend that suspension period for a bit longer, that would be appreciated. Nine months would be fine. Okay. 
Thank you. Thank you. 
least in my four days or what I've seen in the history of what we've had, what the commission as a whole has passed out. That's good if he actually violates it, yeah. Right, well. You know what I mean? So what I'm trying to say is just set it up, so. It may hurt some out just to leave the license, so you don't have to trade it on the day that. Well, the idea is that they won't. So, yes, you know, the expectation is there's a premium that they expect. Right. And, and if there, there is, is, that's not. Um,
motion? No, I just did. Oh, you just did. Oh, then well, I did. Yeah, you did. Yeah. 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 I just did yeah. yeah. make a motion that yeah. all four violations are, they okay. did occur. I second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Okay, the commission's come to uh, the finding. So we find that all four violations uh, did occur. And um, so we voted so that they, um, 
they were violations and the sanctions also are set uh, for each violation as a day um, suspension of the license total in four days uh, suspended for nine months uh, period of time if there's a violation in that um, time frame those four days will have to be served but the days will be picked by the licensee they have to be all picked in, in one calendar year but it's up to the licensee uh, what days those would be and they don't have to run consecutive they can be one day at a time so and if there's no violations sorry. as yeah. long as there's no other violations there's no days missed at all obviously that's that's where it's at so all right um a written decision will be sent out of uh, certified mail to the licensee and the ABCC within three business days. Thank you very much for telling us. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate it. It's off service. Thank you, Mr. Governor.